Hi, this is Josh Haftel, and we're doing another video on Adobe Lightroom CC, this time going through the optics and the geometry sections. So let's get right into it. I'm going to open up this photo here of this lovely little uh, homeless pooch that was following me around all day long when I was walking around through Havana one day. Um, maybe he wasn't homeless. He didn't have a tag. Most of the dogs in Havana that, that had homes had little tags on them, but he looked like he was uh, taking care of himself pretty well. He was healthy little little pooch because he was quite friendly and I, I liked him a lot. We had a good time pretty much all day long. So what I want to show you here, let's uh, zoom out one step to the fit zoom. I use a command minus to do that. Open up the edit panel. I'm going to scroll on down to the optics section. And there's two things we can do inside of the optics section. One of them is remove chromatic aberrations, and the other one is enable lens corrections. Or removing chromatic aberration is going to go in, and you're going to look for any areas where there might be some uh, little color fringing that happens. Sometimes it happens on an image where there's an overlap between uh, a bright area and a dark area. Uh, on this image, I don't really see much of it. Uh, at the very most, there might be in this section over here. So if we just check that box, what's really awesome about Lightroom CC is that it will automatically find any areas that might be chromatic aberrations and it will remove it for you. You don't have to do anything. You just check the box and it's done. And it's something that I do on a lot of my images because it just makes uh, for a much cleaner uh, looking file. And then the next one is enabling lens corrections. And what this can do when I click on this one is it's going to take the image. It knows that I shot this with a uh, Sigma 50 f 1.4. It's the art lens. And we've made a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of different profiles for thousands of lenses. And what will happen then is it will try and remove any kind of distortions as well as any kind of vignetting that might happen on that image because of that lens. So you can see like with the lens uh, vignetting turned off or I can bring it up, it's going to smooth out the field of tonality. So making sure that the edges are not darker than the center part of the image, which is really nice. And it also works on removing any kind of distortion that might be introduced from that particular lens. Now, the 50 millimeter art lens, one of the reasons I love it so much is that it doesn't have very much distortion at all. So in this case, it doesn't really do that much. Um, but wider angle lenses, I mean, this is a 50 millimeter lens, wider angle lenses, like a 24 millimeter uh, or more, they might have more of that distortion effect on it. So you'll, you'll be able to clean that up. So depending on the lens, depending on the scenario, some of the effects inside of the optics may have more or less of an impact on the image. And here, basically, we just were able to make sure that there's no chromatic aberrations or what's sometimes called uh, color fringing around the image, and then making sure also that we removed any kind of vignetting that's being added in uh, by the lens. So that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty much done with that one. But let's talk about one of my favorite features inside of the entirety of Lightroom CC, which is the upright tool inside of the geometry. So let's pick a photo that the geometry would work really well on. This image works pretty well, actually. So we'll open this one up. And what I can do now is uh, let's, let's talk about what the geometry is for. So when you look at this image, you can see that I was uh, shooting this image straight on, but also I was tilting up just a little bit. Uh, and that was to be able to get the right kind of composition that I like. But what the result was that you can see that this uh, turquoise building over here is kind of like angled a little bit to the right. And this building over here is angled a little bit to the left. And it makes it feel like everything's falling backwards. And the cool thing about geometry is it allows me to correct for that. So it's kind of like using a large format camera with the ability to tilt and swing and shift everything around so it's really really neat now upright does a couple different things uh, we've got a couple different options in here we have auto and if you click on that one you'll see what it'll try and do try and, and make that correct a little bit better but still not right we got also things like level we'll try and automatically level the image but not do any kind of horizontal or vertical effects we've got vertical we'll try and only do the vertical um, we've got full which will try and do everything that didn't work very well, so we'll just turn that off. And then we also have Guided. Now, Guided is the one that I like a lot because I use it all the time. Um, and there's two ways of getting into Guided. The first way is you just click over here and you select Guided, which you can see right here. And the other way, if I turn that off, you can just click this button right over here. And that's going to actually put it into Guided mode also. So either one of those ways is the good way of entering into it. And once you get into guided mode, basically your cursor will change. And what you should do is just click and drag on some areas that should be either horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to do two verticals or two lines that should be vertical. So I'm just to drag and describe that line over there. 
And then I'm going to drag over here and you can see that we've got a nice little zoomed in area to help you out. And then presto changeo, it's made it all straight. And so we know now that this is perfectly vertical, this is perfectly vertical, and that's really, really cool. Now, if I want to, I can go in even more and add in other lines in here. So for example, let's just, I don't know what's gonna even happen if I say, hey, this should have been horizontal. Well, that looks terrible, so we'll delete that one. So maybe we'll see what happens if I said you should have been horizontal. Yeah, it doesn't look good either. I think it was good enough with just the two verticals. Um, and let's work on another image just to give you an idea of what all of the cool things that can happen when you're doing all these different elements with the guided upright. So let's go into this image, uh, another image that I like a lot. I just like the, the colors and I love the two uh, girls walking down the street, one of them looking at me while I was taking a photo. But again, here's that same problem. Because I was angling the camera up a little bit, you can see that the lines are falling backwards. I've got this telephone pole that's falling to the right. I've got this other one falling to the left. If I go back down here to, to the geometry, click on the guided, and I can just draw the line right over here, which is basically that should be vertical. And this one over here, that one should be vertical. And if you don't get it exactly right the first click, that's okay. You can still modify it after the fact. Another thing that should be horizontal is the top of this building. So I can click over here and voila, it looks a lot better. And, and maybe I want to put a fourth one, which is maybe I want the, the street to have been also uh, vertical or horizontal, I should say. And that's good. And now I can click this constrain crop button. And what's going to do is it's going to try and constrain it so that you don't have any of those areas without image detail. Now, if I go into the crop tool, you can see that I've got the crop in here where it's not going over this white area, but I want to move it down a little bit. So to move it down a little bit, what I need to do is I actually need to bring it in just a touch. And now I can actually play around with this until I get the image just so. Bring this over here up a little bit and just play around with it. And then I can hit enter. And now maybe that's a little bit too much on the top and the bottom. So I can bring it down just a little bit because, you know, honestly, I don't need the top of the building in this shot. I don't need to know how big this building was, but giving a little bit of context with the, the street here makes it feel a lot better. So now what I've done here with this geometry tool with it guided upright is I, I made everything look straight and, and nice and clean. So you can see like each one of these windows is a nice clean square. I've got the telephone pole is straight up and down. The, the girls walking on the street are, they don't look like they're falling to the left or the right. Everything looks just nice and clean. And then of course, you know, I mentioned to you before, I like to, I like to tweak a lot of these things after I'm done with it. And then you can see this before, and after. It looks so much better with this geometry being applied. Now, if you really, really want to get in there, you can click on this little uh, icon up here inside of geometry if you really want to get into it, and you can start playing around with the distortion, the vertical, horizontal, rotating, aspect ratio, scale, x, y, offset. You know, I find that the guided upright does all these things for me faster, easier, and better than I could do by moving these sliders. You might want to play around with it, these things, um, I just found, honestly, I never do it. So uh, they're not really that, that useful for me. But you can imagine like the distortion will help you try and correct manually for any kind of uh, lens distortions that, that are in there. The vertical and the horizontal do a lot of that uh, geometry or upright correction, but in a manual way, if you wanna do that. Rotating, obviously it's just gonna rotate the image. Uh, the aspect, what it's trying to do is it's trying to say, well, maybe you wanna keep the aspect ratio exactly as it is, meaning the crop, but you wanna get some stuff from the top and the bottom. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna squish it vertically um, by expanding it to the left and the right or squishing it the other way around. This can be useful uh, when done with some moderation. Now I've got the top of the image in and I've got the, the street in, um, which I couldn't get before without adjusting that aspect ratio control. But for me, again, like I don't often use this, maybe just a little bit, it's, it's fine. The scale will actually zoom in or out the image. On this particular image, if I zoom in out too much, what will end up happening is I'll start pulling out and, and getting into those uh, areas with no detail. And then the X offset and the Y offset, you know, it just basically moves it to the left or right. X is uh, left and right, Y is top and bottom. So, you know, if I, if I really wanted to shift it without having to move the crop around too much, I can do that. But again, this is starting to get a little bit too 
too much in. And I, I find that just using some of the, the, the more visual tools works out. But here's a good example of actually when uh, using the aspect ratio helped out with the image. So I'll take back what I said before, and, and I, I will start using it more often. So you can see again before and after. Looks a lot better uh, afterwards. So that was the optics and the geometry section. So really, really useful, especially the geometry section, something that I use on a lot of my images now because I feel it makes it much more clean.